Good morning. Um, I was. I wrote down here. I'm more nervous speaking to you than I would be to a classroom of 16-year-olds, <laughs> because I know what I'm doing there. You know what I mean. But. Uh, and I guess I feel quite vulnerable because I'm going to talk about my story and um, a couple of people who were massive, ordinary heroes in my life. And I sort of feel, well, I definitely feel very humbled. By the way, if you think I have a beard, it's not menopause. It's, I fell the other day, again, twice in a week. I know, not great. I was helping my daughter move and I don't know. I was messing around with the um, grandchildren, and I just missed the curb somehow. <laughs> anyway, so that's why I've got a nice, nice beard. Um, anyway, um, I know we all have a story, and some of you will have stories that are that are much worse than mine. But this is my story, and I just pray, if I don't live up to your standard of whatever that is, just bear with me. Because I know, you know, as Christians, we, we try not to be judgmental, but we so are. You know, we so are. We judge what people say. We judge how they say it. We judge their accent. We judge their clothes. And I just pray that you'll just let go of all that, and you will really hear my heart today. Right, I, I absolutely love those words in um, Hebrews 12, you know, and, and that picture that it conjures up of all these witnesses sort of on the line, you know, cheering us on. And it reminds me very much of when I did the London Marathon uh, for my 50th birthday to um, raise money for Parkinson's disease because some of you um, knew my late husband, Simon, and he developed Parkinson's um, disease. And um, I was heartbroken, you know, because this most amazing man with the most amazing brain was reduced to a really a shadow of himself. So I thought, right, we'll do something positive here. And so I trained to do the marathon, and uh, I'm not really a runner. You know, it's all right, but it's a bit boring. Anyway, I told my students, if they wanted to encourage me, the worst time is going to be mile 18 or 19. This is what I heard. You know, you hit the wall. Actually, I hit the wall about 14. But, you know, I knew I had to keep going because 14. You can't give up at mile 14. Anyway, around mile 19, I was done. I mean, I could hardly lift my legs. And all of a sudden, I saw this massive sign that said Mrs. Thomas, and there were, I don't know how many students there yelling and Mrs. Thomas and running with me, you know, and it just, it just gave me that impetus. And then a couple miles later, my family were at Tower Bridge and we all hugged and kissed and, and I was like, well, you know, I've only got three or four miles to go. I can do this. Um, now, why am I telling you that story? Because we need encouragement. We need encouragement. We cannot do this life on our own. And you know what? A lot of times what comes out of our mouth is not encouragement. And so today... I'm remembering two people especially who made a difference in my life. And um, I call them my ordinary heroes. Before I go there, I just want to look at the word hero. Often we think of, you know, hear that word hero and you think, you know, big, 
muscular, you know, went up Kilimanjaro, swam the Amazon, I don't know, whatever. Something really amazing, really big. And sometimes we need that, you know, definitely. Uh, it was a sunny day in July 1964. I was almost six years old. Now, back in the day, we didn't go to preschool and kindergarten, you know, no one taught us the ABCs, but I had learned walk, don't walk. And I felt amazing. So I begged my mother, who had us at the time, you guys look a bit serious, it's all right, you can smile, Peter, it's okay, I'll be all right, bless you. Um, anyway, uh, so I begged my mother, would you let me go across the street and get a paper? Because I can read, walk, and don't walk, you know? And so I thought, this is lovely. So she said yes to my amazement. Not the wisest choice she made, but bless her, she, you know, whatever. So I wait for the light to go walk. I walked across with elegance. I knew I was doing the right thing. And out of the corner of my eye, I noticed the cars had stopped as they should. But I saw far off another car. And I remember thinking to myself, of course it will stop, just like the others. How wrong I was. The car, bless him, a 16-year-old, ran a red light, took me for a ride on his bumper. And at that moment, I went into convulsions, and I swallowed my tongue, so I couldn't breathe. And Sorry to be so graphic, I'm sorry. Americans are a bit like that, forgive me. Anyway, someone watching was a paramedic, and he gave me a tracheotomy. And I'm here today, 61 years later, well, 60, 60 years later. And I, I'm amazed. I should have died. I should have died that day. If there's other stories I could tell you, I really shouldn't be here. But here I am. And um, I just want to say, sometimes we need big heroes. But more often than not, we need just the ordinary heroes out there. Um, just ordinary people that can make a difference. So, I've got some heroes up there, but I'm talking today about ordinary heroes. Um, and by the way, my translation or my, my vision of Hebrews 12, of everybody cheering us on and hoping, rooting for us and, you know, hoping we'll get there. I've read some commentaries and it's not really the way it can be interpreted. But I still think it's very encouraging to think if those heroes of faith have gone before us and they made it, we can too. So, why did I need an ordinary hero? Oh, well, my talk is summed up in that. I could actually go sit down. Why we need heroes and how to be one. That's basically the nutshell of my talk. And if uh, you don't know, help me, help me not go on too long. If I go on too long, go like this and I'll, I'll stop. Anyway, my heroes are just everyday people who work hard, who are honest, and have integrity. Right. Why I needed some heroes. Now, these are old photos. Bless. That's my mom on the left, Betty, and I'm the twin on the right. My sister's on the left, and that's my very good-looking dad called Fred, and there I am on the left and my sister on the right. Now, you can tell just from these photographs that our surroundings were a bit deprived, yeah? But what these pictures don't tell you is that my father was an alcoholic, a bad alcoholic <laughs> who could be violent. And my mother had 
um, a lot of mental health issues as well as a low IQ. We were her sixth and seventh babies. Um, she had five sons before us, and she unfortunately was never able to care for any of us. In fact, we were all taken into care. And one of my brothers died when he was in her care. So <sighs> I do not judge my parents, and I do not want you to hear disrespect. They were a product of their history. Um, but they could hardly take care of themselves. So my mother, one of her problems was she was a kleptomaniac, which means she was a compulsive stealer. It's a good thing I did psychology, isn't it? Yeah? Um, anyway, maybe there's a, a sign there. Anyway, um, she got arrested, I don't know how many times, but the police obviously came around and saw, you know, what was going on and saw that there were these two baby girls. And they thought, well, this is not good for these. And, you know, social services stepped in and we were put into care. And we were put into care with these angels. And this is Mama and Papa Sluter. This is their 70th wedding anniversary. Um, they, they're just, yeah, the most incredible people. Do you know, I Googled her, because I couldn't remember the year she died, and she, you know, came up on the internet. I go, I Googled myself, I didn't come up, but I, I just thought, well, <laughs> never mind. Anyway, heroes are ordinary people who make themselves extraordinary. Um, you know, Hold on, I just got to see where I am. Um, yeah, what am I saying? Yeah, um, basically I'm going to tell you some of the qualities I remember in their lives. Now, bearing in mind, we went to them just before this. We look a bit, you know, we don't look all that great, do we? That was our third birthday. I think there are three candles there. Um, and we went to live with them sometime before that. I, obviously, I don't remember when. Um, but look at us just a year and a half later. The power of love. The power of love. And do you know in their lifetime they cared for over 150 children? And most of us, just a short time, we were only there with them until we were five. Two years, two and a half years. But what they gave me lasted until now. And um, I'd like just to tell you some of the things. I know I wouldn't be here. I would not have been here. Do you know they said out of all those children, a handful make it. Most go back to their families of origin, and bad things happen to them. We need love, we need consistency, etc. It was the day of the perm, wasn't it? And he was a barber. He loved to cut our fringe short. <laughs> must, have been, uh, must have been the style. OK, just five quick things I remember from their lives. Um, he died only a couple of years ago at 105. Well, I think it's a little longer now. It must have been um, three or four years ago. Uh, 2018, that's right. She died last year at almost 99. Just incredible. Okay, 
they were cheerful. Cheerful, you know? They weren't grumpy. They weren't moaners. They, they were thankful. They were grateful. And I've got loads and loads of, you know, scriptures that I could give you. But, you know, Proverbs 17, a joyful heart is good medicine. 1 Thessalonians 5.18, in everything give thanks. Um, Hebrews 13.5, be content with what you have. Now, had you met them in the road, you might have not looked twice. They're just ordinary people. As I say, he was a barber, she was a homemaker. Um, but they exuded love. They exuded, yeah, contentment. They weren't always grasping for, you know, more and, and whatever. And they were genuine. What do I mean by that? They didn't put on airs. They were just themselves. Um, and sometimes, as a person who didn't, grow up in England, sometimes I can feel less than here because I don't speak right. My students are always correcting my uh, act, you know, my pronunciation. You probably are, would be surprised that I get made fun of by students, you know? But I do. And I, I, I mean, obviously, my students. You know, we have a great relationship. But out on the playground, if I'm trying to correct somebody, not to, you know, beat someone up or whatever. No, it's not that bad. Um, often they take the mick out of me, yeah? Because I'm different, you know? We like everybody that's like us, don't we? It takes, it takes um, grace to like something different. Anyway, there was not one shred of duplicity in them. What you saw is what you got. And that's what we mean by integrity. Um, thirdly, they were attentive. Now, why is this not working? Hello. Attentive, yeah. Um, they noticed stuff. They had their eyes wide open. I don't know about you, but a lot of my life, I've got my eyes closed now. That's probably why I fell. Um, but you know what I mean. We don't notice. You know, we're just in our own little thing. We're thinking about me, 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 me. And we don't open our eyes a bit wider. Can we be attentive? Um, They were generous, and will you work? Hello. Yeah, they were generous, um, obviously with their money, but they didn't have a lot. Or, you know, I don't know if that's true, but, you know, it seemed that they were just ordinary people with a certain amount of money, but not loads. Um, but it's more that welcome. I don't know if you've ever sense that, you know, but you feel like such a foreigner, you feel like such a, you know, and someone just welcomes you, and they go, I'm so glad you're here. I mean, it's a feeling that I feel when my grandchildren come to visit, you know, I open that door, and I go, you're here, you know, and they go, oh, that lady's so crazy, but I'm so happy they're here, and, but do we welcome in that way is our hearts to welcome and then the last thing I remember faithful the thing I remember most about Papa Sluder was that he would get up he would make eggs and bacon and pancakes every day of his life. Yes, there are Americans that live like that. And he wasn't like this, you know.
But he just got up and did this stuff and made things, you know. And it's like, there's no way you would go out of that house without anything in your stomach, you know. Um, faithful, just dedicated, just dependable, etc. cetera. Um, I'm almost done for those of you, you know, losing the will to live. Um, I'm just going to recap those. Cheerful, genuine, attentive, generous, faithful. And I just like us to think about what quality do you and I need to grow in out of those five? Yeah, only you know the person that you are. Only you know how your culture, how your background has formed you, like Steve was talking about. And we're all deformed. We are. Our spirits are deformed. You know, we sometimes act in ways that are not very nice. And God wants to change us, to do something new in us. Um, I want to say, have you thanked your ordinary heroes? Is there anyone that comes to mind as I've been speaking and you think, oh, you know, I never told that person how thankful I was. I want to publicly thank so many of you for your support when Simon and I came here and as he had his accident and was in the nursing home, I couldn't have done it without some of you. Absolutely not. So thank you for being my ordinary heroes during that time. So maybe there's someone you need to thank. But you know what? Maybe God is touching your heart um, about someone that needs you to be a hero to them. And if you open your eyes, there will be people. We can't save the world. We can't save Luton. We can't. Yeah, we can't. We're just... Ordinary beings, but we can do something. It was interesting. Last, um, I'm sure you guys have met various asylum seekers here in Luton. Uh, there aren't that many South Americans, actually. Hello, Sam. There aren't that many South Americans. And, of course, my ears prick up because, you know, I speak Spanish. We lived in Peru and Bolivia and um, anyway, how my son got to know the four South Americans, well, actually, they're Central Americans as well, in Luton, I don't know. But of course, they ended up at our house. And um, there's, you know, there's only a handful of them. But my son's discipling them. And one of them is called Freddie. And... Uh, he said to me, and I, I think this is just a perfect example of an ordinary hero. He said to me, you know, we're just a small little group. And other people might be embarrassed or say, oh, you know, this little church isn't growing. But he said, you know what, Carly? Joel is changing lives one person at a time. And isn't that the way we, we do it? It's one person at a time whose lives we touch. Act as if what you do makes a difference, because it does. It does. And all of you know me more or less. You know I'm no angel. I get it wrong. I say the wrong thing. I, you know, whatever. I, I'm 
so imperfect, but my heart is to bless. So be an ordinary hero today. All right. Amen. Thank you.